Welcome back to Sailing Joy. Today, we woke up a beautiful anchorage here in Croatia, only to discover that our fridge was already empty of fresh food. So I embarked on a quest to find a mini market on a mini island. Our mission to procure fruits, vegetables, and bread before we set sail for our new anchorage, not far from where we currently are. We've heard that there is an awesome restaurant at our next destination. And the best part is that we can dock our vessel Joy right next to it and for free. Everything sounded perfect until Murphy's Law decided to intervene. As we were tightening up Joy, a thunderstorm hit us, making the docking process a tad more challenging. But wait, there's more. We've also made a decision to sail to a super private and awe-inspiring location in Croatia, a place that hosts a national park with its boundaries, teeming with intriguing activities and sights. Today on Sailing Joy. When I was young, I thought We lowered our dinghy into the water and set off on a mission to find a mini market. Along the way, we made a pit stop to see our friends from Okolo. Do you want anything from the supermarket? Oh, can we come? Yeah, absolutely. We just need two minutes. Yeah. While we tried to stock up with items that can withstand the test of time, before departing for our new season, fresh food has always a shorter span. Within a week, our provisions are usually gone. Of course, our friends faced a similar predicament, but it looks like they came a little bit more prepared, I guess. They brought along alfalfa seeds for planting, and they were kind enough to share some with us. Now we're eager to experience with growing alfalfa board joy. Stay tuned, I'll demonstrate the process later on in this video to see if our green thumbs prevail. Now, here's the twist. In certain parts of Croatia, credit cards are not accepted. It's a cash-only affair. To settle our grocery bill, I had to make a quick trip to the nearby ATM. Unfortunately, filming inside of the mini market was off limits, so we quickly gather our provisions and return to Joy. Our next destination awaits, and we are eager to set sail to the new anchorage. As we sailed towards the next anchorage, we injected some fun into the journey by creating a race between the two boats. Our vessel, Joy, Alagon 46, was up against Okolo, a Fontan Pajot Elba 45. It is always intriguing to observe how these two boats perform under similar conditions. Since it was a short sail with minimal wind, we both glided along towards the anchorage. However, we agreed that the following day, when stronger winds were expected, we would engage in a real race. It will be really interesting to see which one of those boats will perform better. Fate would have it, Okolo reached the bay first and safely secured their boat. But just as we were about to dock, a thunderstorm started out of nowhere, making the docking process a bit more tricky. Of course, as soon as we were safely moored, the rain stopped, leaving us with a beautiful sunny afternoon. Qual a primeira coisa que você faz quando você chega na ancoragem e vai falar lá outro morango? Eles molharam. Mas não pode? Eles molharam? Não. Eles tomaram chuva. O morango não gosta de água neles, é só na raiz. Não sei. Coitadinho esses morangos, né? Mas a primeira coisa que a gente faz quando chega é comer. Eu tô com fome. Eu até sem forças ali pra pegar uns cabos, ó. Tô tremendo de fome. Você mandou muito bem, parabéns. Você mandou bem nos quatro cantos do barco. Foi bem estressante hoje, né? We took a quick shower and set off for a walk, absorbing the serenity of our new surroundings. Here, right in front of the restaurant where we had dinner, is where we will spend the night tonight. In this specific bay, there are two ways to stop your boat. The first option is to secure it to a mooring ball here, or you can dock right behind the two restaurants situated in the bay. Since it's early in the season, they're still working on improvements in some other restaurants here. Let me show you how Joy is securely tied to their dock. We deployed an anchor all the way forward, reversed engines, and used their lines at the back of the boat to dock. It worked out well, although the odd angle of the dock posed a slight challenge. The following morning, I came up with the courage to plunge into the crystal clear but cold water and give her a whole cleaning. It's been two years since we got Joy. 
and we have yet to repaint the bottom. So regular cleaning is essential to keep it ship shape. And of course, gain that extra 0.001 knot of extra speed when sailing. Today, we'll put Joy to the test and see if we can outpace Okolo, the Fontaine Pajot Carabran sitting next to us as we race towards the next anchorage. With the sails raised, our regatta is about to begin. The wind conditions are perfect, varying between 14 and 20 knots. And we are now cruising along at six knots. Occasionally, I can feel Joy healing a bit, but overall, it's comfortable sail. Let the race start. Apologies guys, we will have a rematch on the next sail to determine which boat truly excels under equal conditions. Today, the Lagoon 46 claimed victory, capitalizing on the power of its mainsail and sailing a bit faster reaching a top speed of 7 knots with 18 knots of wind. As we arrived here, we immediately felt like we have reached paradise. Welcome to Miljet National Park. Here. A fee grants you entry and anchoring rights. It is a serene heaven, nestled in the heart of nature. We are now located still in the southern portion of Croatia, and this place sits in the northwest part of Miljad Island. The park spans a vast area and have two saltwater lakes. Its scenic beauty includes submerged bays, pristine beaches, mysterious sea caves, and even a small island housing a 12th century monastery. Visitors here can explore many trails or paddle along kayak routes. Alternatively, you can rent a bike or e-bike, just as we did. Sentindo naqueles filmes da Disney, sabe que as princesas que ficam presas nos bosques. Certainly, boat life is indeed a lot of work, and those who have experienced it were not exaggerating. Maintaining, cleaning, fixing things along the way are essential tasks. Personally, I don't mind. Waking up to the forest bird singing is a magical feeling. As I gaze out from the boat, the scenery was simply breathtaking. And by the way, do you recall the seeds we have received as a gift from our friends? Today, we're embarking on a little experiment here at Joy. This is what we'll do. We will fill these trays with seeds, stack them on top of each other, and then seal them with the final lid. Next, we add water. In the bottom tray, we remove the excess water after it has passed through all the layers. That's a process in a nutshell. Now, we have to return to it twice a day and eagerly wait for the result after five days. Fingers crossed and let's hope for some green sprouts. Here at Miljet, anchoring comes with a price tag. Around 40 euros a day for a boat like ours. Very interesting. Croatia seems to have adopted a trend where anchoring often requires payment. While there are still some free bays, more and more Croatians encouraging them to use mooring balls, which comes with a fee. Be prepared to put some money aside for it and have some cash at hand, as sometimes no credit cards are accepted. Reaching the hilltop, we checked on Joy, floating serenely down at the anchorage. All appeared well, so we continued to the islands to check it out. Along the way, we noticed that the park ranges collected trash that had washed ashore as separated for a proper disposal. Now, exploring the island on foot didn't quite do it for us, so we retraced our steps, gathered some spare change, and opted to rent electric bikes for a longer trail to see the sea lakes they have in the middle of the island, where you can visit the monastery. Off we went, discovering the island hidden gems. After having lots of fun along the way, riding our bikes like kids again, we reached the lake that had the monastery and realized that right in the middle there was an island and we would have to reach it by boat. Luckily, there was a little sign saying, there's one simple rule here to get to the island. Wave this flag and a little boat would come your way. Today was rough, an easy slip and then you're out the door. You had enough. After exploring the island by bike, 
we were back at Joy. I decided to take a plunge into the water, a toy we had here over Joy that cost me a very sore and bruised rib last season. But no hard feelings. Have you ever heard of a e-foil? It's a surfboard with a mast underneath it attached to a wing and an electric jet engine. I'm totally addicted to it and it makes you feel like you're flying above water. As I assembled my board, I spotted staff already on the water, waiting for me to join him. Let the fun begin. Back on Joy, I received some unsettling news. Bad weather was approaching, and Patricia was glued to her mobile phone, interpreting wind data as she was predicting the end of the world. Fear not, we're gonna be okay. It is actually going to be our first storm of the season. After four days here, this uh, national park in Croatia called Mislat, which we loved, it was really, really nice. Uh, we're gonna go uh, up north a little bit uh, to a uh, to a place called Uvala Luka. I'm learning all these uh, words in Croatian now. And uh, we're gonna be spending maybe like two days there because uh, after that, uh, we're supposed to get probably 15 knots of uh, wind and we're gonna find shelter in one of the very sheltered bays that they have over there up north. So we have like 16 miles, which is not very long. Uh, this has been a walk in the breeze for us. Uh, Croatia has been terrific because the anchorages are very close one to the other. So we sail three, four hours a day and we are in the next anchorage. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I think winds are gonna be favorable and we're gonna enjoy the sail. And that and much more will bring it to you on our next episode. Until then, stay safe and fair winds.